I got them poured out in the paint pan because that's what I'm going to work from. Me some, too. Some foam brushes. I got a foam roller here. They're inexpensive and they work well, especially with latex paint. A nice red bucket with some water. Nice. And over here we have sponges. Sponges. And graining combs, various tines and thicknesses for various kinds of uh, effects that you can do. And this, when you're using latex, always with use paint. a nylon brush because they're easier to clean. If you use a bristle brush with latex, you might ruin the brush. And we have plastic, crumpled up plastic. I know you've probably seen us do crumpled up newspaper for marbleizing. This plastic is good for crumpling and painting as and, well. And the reason you want to use the plastic is because if you use newspaper on latex paint, it might dissolve the, the ink on the newspaper and you may get black spots on your finish. So you don't all want the news that. is bad anyway. Let me paint something now. Now first, I, I've got to, we have two different colors here. So if I put on some of this nice red. I'll, I'll paint with the lighter color, the salmon. To take some of this plastic, make sure it's nice and crinkly. And I'll pick up some of this other color. And dab. And I'll dab with the dark color. Now you can go straight to a, uh, a white if you want a, a starker effect. You know, I've never done this before. Can anybody tell? Really? Now, you do want to pay attention to what's happening. Uh, I'm dabbing here and I'm, I'm absorbing, I'm mixing a lot of the colors together. So if I was doing this on an entire wall, you would take it to this stage, kind of like what's over here, let it dry, and then come back and apply a second coat of your lighter color if you want more highlights. I don't like mine. Neither do I. I don't like yours either. Well, you started out like good, but you see, you're you're doing you're you're what you're doing is. Teach. You, this is like a how-to show. Well, almost. if you start in one corner, yeah. you know, and work your way down. See how I'm working from this corner, and uh -huh. I'm working out. You're you're going all over the place. I'm dipping into the water here. Why? You thirsty? No. The latex is soluble with water. So I can soften up. Now I'm filling in with some more red. I just can't get this part right. Everything else looks well, good. Well, I know me. what to do. What? Go or... smoke about 20 packs of cigarettes and sit in the bar for about 40 hours. That's always good then, for an artist. Then it'll come to you. The important thing is to make sure that everything looks even. Even though you're doing a modeled effect, it's got to look balanced. If you, you put too much paint in one side, it's going to look unbalanced, uneven. I don't know. Maybe this isn't for me. Mm -mm. You be the judge. Don't go away because next we'll be combing a wall. Shake your head, darling. Next. Next we have. The combs. The combs. Various the combs. mighty combs. These mighty combs right here. That gives you a lovely, even tilled field look. All sorts of sizes, shapes. You got smaller one was the smallest. This is the smallest here. This would be like a, a wheat a, a wheat one. This would be like for for corn. And this would be like a pick. Well, yeah, for, I used to have a comb hair. like that in 1973. And this a is long a... suede coat and cream colored platform shoes. Boy, was I a sight. Big hat. I can't imagine. And hair down to your butt, right? Well, my hair doesn't go down. It just goes out. On this panel here, this got red on it already. I did a modeled effect just with the roller going over the primed piece of sheetrock. These are pieces of sheetrock. We just yeah. uh, cut them up. What a, what a whole sheet, cut them up. You may have some in the basement left over from a remodeling job or something. Right, if you want to practice uh, these wild and wacky things, you might want to do it on sheetrock. Or if you're real brave, just go right to the wall. You Don't know, you do could, that. You could just paint right over it again. It's, you're not like you're going to hurt the wall. So I already put some red on here, and this is going to be a first, an experiment. So I'll 
But there I put, might be an explosion. I'm going to put this collar over top of it. And I have the salmon on the And bottom. I'm going to see. I want to put it on fairly thick. He's such an artist. One day, I expect to find an ear on his floor. Let's see. See, I'm making a, an effect even with just the red and the, uh, the, the, the salmon color. A modeled effect with the roller. It's kind of soft and nice and romantic, I think. Well, what do you think of that? You hate it, right? It, it looks good. Thank you. But there's no beginning and there's no end. Now what shall I do? I'll go this way. No, I won't either. And as we watch the gently undulating comb, it kind of makes you want to sleep. First, relax the neck. Relax the neck, turn the head. See how. Silence is golden. All right, you get a real sponge. These are genuine sponges, and they are sold in paint stores just for this purpose. That's right, and they're for a stippling effect. They absorb water, and latex is water-soluble. You can pick up paint, and you can make dabs, and you can make all kinds of decorative effects. Got another blank canvas here. Gonna and put the salmon down. I'll put some salmon down. With the roller. See, I like, I like the pattern that rollers make. We'll just leave that, and then we can go home. See, to me, that's the. You missed the, the spot. I did that on purpose, because I'm going to put. That's a light switch. See. <laughs> what an artist, folks. See, now if I was popular, I could sell that. Yeah. Too bad you ain't. Well, look, I can it's make okay. a, can a candle too. See. Yeah. Don't worry, soon you'll have a show and you'll say, as seen on TV, starving artist sale. Got the picture, but no frame, no, no matter. matter. All right, now I'm going to stipple with the, with the salmon. Again, you're blending the colors together. And it can be a similar effect as the first technique that we did, but it'll be a bit more muted. And notice over here, I got a little piece of wood and I'm just putting some of the red on so I don't have to keep dipping into the pan because I don't want to keep picking up huge globs of paint like someone I know is doing. You're getting carried away now. Why don't you pick up some more red and they'll make some heavy red highlights on that. See, now you're teaching. Well. You're getting dangerously close to teaching now. Ha highlights all can over. I can I just show you? Sure. If you pick up some red mm -hmm. and now. Okay. See, now you got the start of something big here. Steve Allen wrote that. Schmock, schmock. Gets up in the morning, writes, writes a, song. a song. Goes to the bathroom, wrote writes another song. song. Jane, I'm out of toilet paper here. Wait, I can make a song out of that. <laughs> I'm, I'm out, out of, of toilet, toilet paper. paper here, Jane. <laughs> what a guy. Fetch me a newspaper. I call it Hendrix on Venus. We've uh, well, brought in these walls to demonstrate a... A more advanced technique, a painting beautiful. technique. And this is, we're going to duplicate. See this fabric here? It's from an actual job that I did. This is a, a moire. We're going to de duplicate this pattern on a wall. It's a finish very popular in Amsterdam. Moire. Yeah, moire. From yes. Amsterdam. Put a Richard Deacon's bench down here. Maybe do it in a Dick a Van Dyke brown. That's right. That's enough. <laughs> anyway, what you need to do with this finish, you need oil paint, you need a roller, you need a paintbrush, you need a graining comb. Well, I have this graining comb that... Hand it down to you. This is the one that I did the finish with. This is an older one. And it's got the, uh, the hairs on it, which are really steel, are uh, smaller than the other ones. 32nd of an inch, you'd say? Just about, yeah. It's got the original green paint on there, too. And that's what 
<laughs> you'd never cleaned it off because you knew we were going to use more well, green. You, you want it to look lived in. And that's going to give it the fine grains of this yeah. original. Well, you're, you're never going to be able to duplicate this actual pattern, but it will give you that undulating effect that, you know, looks like a, an electrocardiogram. <laughs> but what you have to do is you paint the paint on. You have your partner, your helper, go around with a roller. You can see back here it's already been cut in. I cut that in. You know what cutting in is? That's cutting in. Yeah, it's when you do the edges carefully with a brush. Well, I so taped them too. You taped them too, and then when you fill in with the roller, you don't have to roll right up to the edge. That's right. So you, you get somebody to roll them in, then you've got to let the paint sit, and you've got to let it tack up a little bit. And then we're going to go from ceiling to chair rail molding. The whole piece, run the cone from the top all the way to the bottom. Excuse me. That's all right. And then... Go from the chair rail molding down to the baseboard. Now I'm going to roll, going to roll. with the green paint. I don't roll, think I roll, I, roll I don't paint. think I need to get on the ladder here. Oh, look at all that that heavy blob up there. I'll get it. I'll get it. You know, when you roll, you start in the middle of the wall, not at the top. Well, I wanted to. And the paint's got to be applied on evenly because you're going to be pulling this paint down. And if it's on too thick, it's going to glop up. If it's on too thin, you're not going to make any marks. So I'm ready to grain now. I'm going to use this comb that I showed you before, and I'm going to use a rag for when I pull down. I'm going to gather paint on this, on the teeth here, and you just want to wipe it off as you go. And the, the trick is, as I said, I'm going to pull from the top down, and then, and then go from the bottom up. From the bottom up. So we'll see what happens. Now, we've uh, painted both of these walls and let them dry. Well, well, you have to judge for yourself how long you want to let it dry. If you're doing a whole wall, it might be a two-person job. That, that is, one person uses the roller, and the other person follows with the comb. If you're doing it by yourself, you don't want to paint 10 feet of wall and then go back to the comb, because the beginning of the wall will be too dry to comb. Make sure the paint also isn't too thick on the wall because then it'll bunch up on the comb. Now I'm gonna go up. Now at night when the lights are dimmed. <laughs> Just candlelight. Yeah. What's the end of that? There's a flickering effect that occurs. You're not, can, you're not you only make, getting a look, you're getting a texture here. You're getting a texture, exactly. I'll de now demonstrate the cover of every record album of 1963. <laughs> Beatles, this way. <laughs> That's our album cover, the furniture on the men album cover. Give, give them a step ladder then. When you take off your tape, you'll see how beautiful it looks. And there we have our moray. Same when thing. the moon hits your eyes like a big pizza pie, that's a moray. That's a moray? <laughs> See Joe Pry. Pry, Joe, pry. I'm prying. I pried off my front arm panel. There Joe's prying off his. You see, it is it is oh, a, it's a flap. It's attached by the umbilicus of cording. But couldn't you just let this hang and put your remote control on here? <laughs> you know, I see people with like little holsters on the side of their recliners. I think that is just so American. Okay, so what are you, you gonna take off all this uh yes. you've taken it off already? I have actually taken it off. I've see taken off my front arm panel. As, as you can see, the front arm panel is hiding all the ratty edges of fabric that have come from various other fabric panels. And I've pulled mine off, and I have re removed the cording, and I have removed the outer fabric. And what do we have underneath? The cotton batting. And underneath the cotton batting, attached a to a, a bit of plywood, 
and we have a flap of cardboard which keeps this. This is a very special kind of nail. You can find these. Can you find them easily? No. You can go to an upholstery supply store. You can go to a magazine shop and get a woodworker supply book. And there in the back will be lots of different catalogs that will devote 90% of their pages to uh, Wood. woodworking and finishing. But you'll find some upholstery and in it. And two pages for upholstery. Just don't go looking for a picture of that nail. So what I'm going to do is pull this back. I'm not going to replace the cotton batting because Y looks fine. And with the staple gun, I'll put one staple in there. Wait a minute. Cover it with the batting. And now replace the fabric. What fabric are we replacing with? Something where, blue, I think. Where right? have you been? Same as the buttons. Same as the buttons, same as the back, same as the fabric that we got a lot of. And I just pull this around. This is how you make front arm panels. Mm. The top, you got to make pleats. You got to hide the pleats. I'm doing the sides and then the top. Yeah. It doesn't matter. It's so small. And, and besides, if you see any of these pleats, which you're not going to if you, if you pull them tight, they're going to be obscured by the cording that we have not eliminated. I have to redo the cording. Yes, I do. Does it look ratty underneath there? My friends, it's going to. That's the whole deal about this stuff. It looks ratty underneath. But on the, the outer knee. The outer side, it looks nice. I can't see it from here. Clean. I'm... It's a lot like our lives, you know, outside. Speak for yourself. Outside, everything's fine and dandy. Underneath, who knows the festering evil. Turmoil. I like to uh, you want bang. To put, a, put a pad on that and then bang with your mallet. I'm just banging with my big fist. Front arm panel is done. That wasn't hard, was it? Hello. Welcome to Focus on Furniture. Today we'll be discussing a particular kind of furniture that's very popular today. It's called Nordic Surprise. Nordic Surprise. <laughs> and it is often broken down and shipped in boxes for you, the consumer, to assemble. Mm -hmm. Various parts of the different furniture are manufactured in different areas of the world. Do you think that's that somebody in one hemisphere can make one part of a cabinet, another person in another hemisphere can make the other part, and it all fits together perfectly? Mm -mm. Let's find out. Well, we? first, let's open it up. Whoops. Oops. Oops. Now, we used to tell people, um, test the quality of furniture by lifting it up, because heavy furniture is better. But flake board, God, it weighs a ton. And flake board is not good. It's all pressed wood. It's all wood chips that are all pressed and formed. and into sheets that they cut up and then they laminate uh, wood grain. This is a picture of wood on here, I believe. No, yeah, I believe it's it is. It's a picture, it's a picture. But it's a nice picture. It looks nice. It could be a picture of your aunt. It doesn't matter. And here we have, gee, I don't know which part of the furniture this is. This, this is a fluid, isn't it? This is plastic. Uh, it's, it's, don't, don't show them that. Well, those are directions. These are the directions. Uh, here's your, this and is. And the directions are, they're just pictures now. So you don't necessarily have to know how to read, just how to follow a picture like where knob A goes into hole B and things like that. And the wonderful surprise package we have here, <laughs> it's just like a bottle of, a bag of those, uh, you, get the, you get the prize, no Cracker Jacks. Like now you got little fluted dowels here. Yeah, and you're gonna need and, glue and for that. You're gonna that. need glue, right? Just find so the glue. Here's a little pack. <laughs> I gave you the packet of glue. I thought this was that silica to keep out the moisture. No, what but, a country! My, but it's oh. actually a little glue, and I think you put a little pinhole there, and you can. And that's to put together the drawer, right? That's yeah. Now, how much did this cost? You may ask. I was told this cost about fifty bucks. Now, now for fifty bucks, you can go to any sidewalk flea market. Or, buy or something you not only don't have to put together, but doesn't have an ounce of flake board. There's no way to repair flake board. Other things can be glued or something. Flake board breaks apart, just like if you made something out of shredded wheat like and lacquer. Like toast, yeah. It's gone. 
it's gone. Is this stuff worth buying? I believe to a point. If you have the the stipend from mom and dad freshman year, the thousand dollars for the entire room of the eight hundred and fifty, yes. If you are a homeowner, your first your first home and you don't have time to go out and shop for something that might have some quality. You just want to, you know, it's like fast food, only furniture. So we put it together. Can you put it together? Yeah. Now, the one thing you got to remember, when you, if you do buy something like this, and I'm, I've bought some, I bought a couple of large bookshelves because they were on sale and I needed to put up a lot of books and a lot of right. albums. But if you get something that's really big, the, the longer the shelf and the heavier things that you put on there, the shelf eventually is going to bow. And that's And then you'll have to cord. put up broomsticks in between to hold it up, or shelf holders. So remember, if you're going to just get shelves, why not get some two-by-sixes from a lumber yard and bang them together? I mean, just the shelf can be banged together with nails. I always say in buying something like this, I take the lyric from a fine old song, always let your conscience be your guide. What song is that? It's from uh, Pinocchio. Is it really? Uh-huh. That's it for this week. All right, kids, we're talking over the credits now. Furniture problem got you down? Well, then write us. Maybe we can help. It's cheaper than a therapist. And your question might even end up on TV. Send your letters to Furniture on Demand. Care of the Learning Channel. 7700 Wisconsin Avenue. Bethesda, Maryland, 20814. And we can't promise to answer all the letters because... Well, you know, we like...